In this episode of Fictional Hangover, we talk about how this book is so precious. <laughs> being broken by background garlic, illustrations being a matter of perspective, and our favorite found family in our discussion of Unfamiliar by Haley Newsom. Hey everybody, welcome to Fictional Hangover, a podcast about young adult and new adult books, series, authors, and voice actors that is full of spoilers. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. And today we're going to discuss Unfamiliar by Haley Newsom. Oh, you were precious too. Oh. Everybody's mm. precious. Everybody's precious. We're all precious. We are. Standard I think that can disclaimer. be an unfamiliar name. Precious. We're precious. If you haven't read this book, please remember that Fictional Hangover is all about spoilers. If you haven't read and don't want to be spoiled, stop listening to us and go read the book. Then come back. If you haven't at this point, want to pretend that you have, or if you don't care about spoilers, or if you just like the show so much that you don't care about any of that, then listen up. Yay! Yay! This book is so precious. It really, really is. And even though we've got, we're, we're a new month now, we've got our new theme of road trip, like, this one is not included with our little cute ribbon on it, but it kind of can be if you like squint and turn your head to the side. It's you know, like it's, it's less road like trip and more broomstick. She's, she's moving. Trip. Yes. Yeah. 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 But she does travel from one location to another location. I know, and that's a really that is like the, the t- most tenuous of hashtag tenuous link. TM. Yeah. yeah. But we don't have to every week. No, but a challenge. Just... We got into a rut. I say we got into a rut. We got into a thing a couple of years ago where every single book just so happened to fall into it. And when yes. we didn't do a book that fell into the theme, it felt then we felt peculiar. weird. Yes. But we had to break the cycle. We you did. Have, sometimes you have to break the cycle. Yes. Yes. So this one is our cycle breaker this month. Yes. Normally it's our vampire book club pick that is a cycle breaker but not this month (laughs) i'm very excited about all vampire book club me too me too but that's at the end of the month and we're only at the beginning of the month but we are going to be doing it live that's july 21st yes at 5 p.m central Central. (laughs) yes 11 for me (laughs) Five for me. For you, yes. Five plus or minus uh, two or one. Other time zones on... are available across the world. We've um, given you two. Yes, yes. and you Please have to use figure Google out Google to yes. figure out the others because it breaks our brains when we try to do it. And then, to be fair, it's also too many characters on the board. It's a lot. It's a lot. It is. It it's is. Fine. It is. But I'm very excited for it. Same. I love doing the lives because I like making a fool of myself. <laughs> Same. Yes. <laughs> I really enjoy it. But anyway, Anywho, we're not let's there talk yet. About this. Yes, no. No, not. Not at all. Let's have some background information. Okay. So I found this on community.waycom.com. I don't know if I said that right, but I don't, it's fine. That sounds intensely American. Waycom. It, it does. Oh. Or like. 80s kind of like Viacom. Yes, that is, that is what it is. <laughs> so this uh, interview is talking about the um, illustrations. Yes. And so they say, the way you do backgrounds is also very wiggly <laughs> and stylized, <laughs> almost to the point of abstraction. Like... Some people have pointed out that Planchette lives in a loaf of bread. What inspired that? And I just want to say I didn't see that until I read this question, and then I had to go back and look at it again. I did not see it as a loaf of bread. I read it. I saw it as something else. It is, and that's what she says. So um, the uh, the response is 
That comes from unfamiliar being something that was therapeutic for me. Trying to make the backgrounds a character is the only way I could do them without hating them. And because I wasn't planning unfamiliar as a professional product, I was doing it to deal with the stress of art school in my free time, which I had barely any of. I didn't put the work in. And now, canonically, her house is all wobbly. (laughs) But then, she says, I mean, it's supposed to look like a skull, but it kind of looks like a loaf of bread. All I I'm saw the entire the time was a yeah. skull. Yeah, I did not. I'm see looking loaf at of it bread. now, and I saw the skull, and I'm still seeing the skull, but I can sort of see where the loaf of bread. I mean, it's a burnt loaf of bread because it's black. Yeah, and it's got you know a, a shape, ish. Got two eyes, a nose hole, and a mouth hole, and teeth. Yeah, I. It's, that's angry bread. Yeah, it's I don't skull. know. I mean, I'm holding it up, and because yeah. of brightness, it really ex- exaggerates the schoolness. Yeah. But I guess that's loaf-shaped, if your loaf is very cartoony. Like a muffin, you know? It's like, a, you know, you got the bottom, and then you got a big puff at the top. Looks like a cottage loaf. Okay, I mean, you know, it's an optical illusion. People see what they see. I'm not going to argue yes. with it. No, and it's fun. It's fun to talk about, because it everyone... Tells you- like you like you see something different, you get something different out of books when you read them. So Constance loves seeing a loaf of bread, no doubt, because she's a baker. Yes, right. Yeah. We see skulls because we because have very little souls and like horror. Yeah, I was gonna say because we're dead inside. It's basically the same. Yes. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> what are your initial oh. thoughts of this one? I think we've already basically covered the fact that this book is so precious. Yes. Yeah. That's all it's I got. Just it's just precious. I love these indie books, though. Yeah. We don't really cover, like, we don't cover DC or Marvel books, you know, Dark Horse ones, really. We don't cover yeah. the big industry ones. We look out for these really special gems. Yeah. We look and out for just, the little guy. Yes. I mean, to be fair, we, we talked about Nimona, and now Nimona is going to be on Netflix at the end of this month. I like, know. Is it today? Was, is it? Is it? Is it's it soon. T- I don't know. Is it today of time of recording? I can't remember. But yeah, it's going to be on Netflix. So, Fictional Hangover predicts. We create. We, we manifest. We do. We do. We do that a think, lot and it's weird. It is. We have magical powers. I just wish we could channel them into certain directions. I just wish that someone Waffle would House. give us money. Waffle, Waffle House. House. Yes. Waffle House. When, when is Waffle House going to learn? I don't know. I don't know. Look, they're busy making delicious food because apparently, you know, the people that run Waffle House, like at the very top, are also the people who cook in the kitchen. They're all the same people. They're very busy cooking delicious food. So, well, they should be cooking delicious food for me, which they would be doing if they sent us money so I can come over to visit. It's true. Oh, right, calm, calm. One day. Calm. One day calm. it'll we'll happen. Ha- that's a different road trip for another day. Yes. <laughs> anyway, I think we should start. I think we should start the summary of this. Yeah. Okay. It's the best. <laughs> it really is. We should just stop talking. That's the end of the episode. Thank you. <laughs> On a dark and stormy night in a suburban house, a witch casts a spell. Flesh of the fruit, milk of the beast, herbs of the earth. Poof! The spell has worked, and the witch, Planchette, has made... The perfect pizza. (laughs) Yay! (laughs) Her familiar Winston, a cute white rabbit that looks exceptionally like a guinea pig, however, (laughs) insists Planchette stop messing around and start packing, indicating the big moving day circled in red on her calendar. It's fine! She's got magic on her side. Sort of. As she smashes a bottle from the shelf in a very unsuccessful display of talent. Fine. Picking up armfuls of stuff, Planchette dumps it into her trunk, and she's good to go. Whew! After a broomstick flight, Planchette and Winston arrive at their new home, which is shaped like a skull or a loaf of or bread, a loaf of bread on your perspective. <laughs> and it's perfectly haunted, is what it is. It's haunted. Planchette insists it's an antique, not haunted, and she and Winston look around. But then the portraits start looking back, the heads turning, 
Then a clown doll falls on her. And a court rack has hands. Why does the court rack have hands? <laughs> nope. 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 Planchette and Winston make a quick exit and sit outside the house, wondering what to do. We read this book already. We did. We did. Is there a dog hero? Is there a dog hero in this one? <laughs> it's a guinea pig. <laughs> Planchette is worried. She's only a kitchen witch. So how's she going to deal with these ghosts? Well, never one to let a situation get the better of her, Planchette grabs her broom with plans to fly into the town, introduce herself to the local witches, find someone who knows something about the house, and make a new best friend. Yay. Only nobody's there. <laughs> the town is empty. <laughs> Eventually, Planchette and Winston come across a girl called Pinion with a bird. Ari on her head. Pinion looks dripping wet, but the story behind it, Pinion explains, is long and boring. So Planchette asks for help with an exorcism instead. <laughs> Pinion agrees, and together they go back to the haunted house. Quietly, Pinion psychs herself up. She can do this and not be a total disappointment. And then she and Planchette enter the house. There are spirits everywhere <laughs> so many coming out of the wazoo everywhere pinion stands straight and in a commanding voice which planchette is in total awe of demands as the daughter of the coven of wings the ghosts leave this place poof it doesn't work <laughs> womp womp. but the ghost's got to kick out of it <laughs> Outside, Pinion uses her phone to search Witchy How and finds a 10-step method of exercising your home. It's perfectly normal to look on the internet for help. They'll need supplies, though. Together, Planchette and Pinion head to Hexmart, where the shop girl has her eyeball in her ponytail, a smile full of sharp teeth, and amazing blunt bangs. <laughs> Planchette and Pinion find everything they need and are quickly back at the haunted house. Together, they start spraying holy water, which two little girl spirits splash in, and throwing bulbs of garlic around, which a ghost roasts in the kitchen. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Pinion is as bad at magic as Planchette is. With precise apologies, Pinion declares, it's time she shares her story. I love the ghost cooking the garlic in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I love the shining twins they're so cool <laughs> well at the edge of town is a mansion on chicken legs Baba Yaga anyone Ooh. it is home to a family of powerful witches well all of them are except Pinion earlier that day Pinion visited the witch doctor to find out why her magic is so weak unfortunately you're Fortunately, depending on your point of view, there are no hexes, curses, or ailments affecting Pinion. She is simply a dud. And, to make matters worse, by now she should have found her animal familiar, or at least, at the very least, spoken to animals. Feeling sorry for herself, Pinion heads to Hexmart for chocolate, and the shop girl has just the thing for her mood and sells her an umbrella. <laughs> Walking along, Pinion opens the umbrella, and it starts to rain on her from under the canopy, perfectly matching her mood. Suddenly, she hears a squaw of distress. A fire fox is attacking a bird. The fox claims it's the circle of life, but the bird sees it as murder. Today, Pinion is in no mood for the weak to be beaten by the strong and saves the bird by putting her raining umbrella on the fire fox and scaring it away. The bird doesn't look great. It's <laughs> got little X's over its eyes and it's like singed. <laughs> the bird asks Pinion if she's okay since she looks so sad. Pinion explains about her visit to the witch doctor when the bird points out that she's talking to an animal right now. <gasps> Currently. 
Oh, yay. <laughs> Pinion explains to Planchet that she was destined to meet Ari sooner, only he got distracted by breadcrumbs and predators. Ooh. And they ran into Planchet and Winston a few moments later. Planchet commiserates with Pinion and reassures her she feels the same way. Taking the now slightly melted chocolate Pinion bought from the Hexmart, Planchette casts a spell, making the chocolate solid, with the message, cheer up Pinion and a bird picture in the segments. Pinion loves it. It's really cute. I want to eat it's... that chocolate bar. I'm not yes, going to lie. I do too. Planchette explains she's pretty good at food magic, but anything else? <laughs> Less so. <laughs> While Planchette and Pinion have been bonding, the ghost in the kitchen, has picked up Winston and Ari and is about to put them into her pot with the bulb of garlic. (laughs) Planchette grabs the familiars and the ghost turns her head toward Planchette, her neck snapping at an odd angle as she picks up the cleaver from the bench. Screaming, Planchette and Pinion flee the haunted house to the Hex Mart, where the shop girl is about to close up after a long day and is in no mood for more customers and refuses to help. Planchette pleads with the shop girl. It's a life or death situation. But she's not interested as she's too exhausted to perform any exorcisms. As the shop girl locks the Hex Mart doors, a pretty pink girl with a kitten ear bow in her hair comes by. She apologizes and offers to come back later. Shop girl is stunned. The pretty girl is Babs. She's come to ask for help from shop girl, Sun, as we finally find out her name, who she went to school with. Sun doesn't know what help she can be and is staggered that anyone remembers her. Planchette wonders who this girl is. The panels change to Babs in a kitty onesie and she's playing a Nintendo DS style <laughs> system. Marlo, her one-eyed cat, it's just one big giant eye by the way, reminds her that it's her birthday and says they should celebrate with more than just ordering pizza and watching movies as they always do that. And instead they should go out. Babs is anxious about going outside and being around other people. It frankly sounds awful. Ew. Same Z's. Same as Babs. Marlo indicates Babs' yearbook and Sun's picture and says he can go out and find her because she might be able to help fix Babs. Babs remembers Sun having an aura that kept others away while she was hounded and crowded. And Babs was always jealous of that. Okay, we'll go. Back to now, Babs doesn't want to be a bother for Sun, especially since she's so tired. Planchette offers a mutually beneficial solution, a help train. Planchette, Pinion, and Babs head off, walking and talking, and Sun follows reluctantly. Pinion went to private school but has heard of Babs. She is known as the half-siren schoolgirl, which Planchette finds amazing. Soon they arrive at Planchette's haunted house, which is screaming. (laughs) Pinion stays outside while Planchette and Babs venture forth. The ghosts are everywhere. There's a Japanese-style twisted spirit crawling along the ceiling, twins standing at the top of the stairs, and bedsheet ghosts popping up left, right, and center. The ceiling ghost drops down to terrify the two witches, but Babs looks it straight on, her eyes going all wibbly-wobbly, and tells the ghost to stop. Babs then ties the ghost's hair back from her eyes with her own ribbon, and it transforms the spirit, who thanks Babs before poofing away, leaving only the ribbon behind. Planchette is in awe and demands to know Babs' ways. Babs explains that ghosts get stuck because they are unhappy, so now Planchette has a plan. She's going to help the ghosts with the power of love. And she will work through the night and then really move in. But she falls asleep instead. <laughs> Bless it. She didn't get any sleep the night before. She's too busy packing. <laughs> Planchette wakes up in bed with Winston asleep on her chest. Babs has left a note explaining that she and Pinion put her to bed and helped her unpack a little. Refreshed and revitalised, Planchette is ready to bring peace to some ghosts. But first, Breakfast. The ghosts are everywhere still, so Planchette loudly tells them that if she can grab something to eat, she will help them after. The only provisions, however, Planchette has 
is a bulb of garlic. <laughs> Even the water from the tap is a ghost. <laughs> yeah, so she's really got no other choice but to head to a diner. A quick broomstick fight later. Planchette is in an adorable diner and her waitress is Sun. She works everywhere, all the time, because she's saving up for something. After placing her order for a short stack of pancakes, Babs comes in and Planchette calls her over to her booth. Babs explains her problem to Planchette and how she thinks Sun and her aura may help her. Sun is always so busy and Babs doesn't know how to approach her, so Planchette offers to help. But her plate of pancakes arrives and she's lost to the delicious, soft, sweet short stack. So Babs explains to Sun that she wants to learn how to be left alone. Sun thinks Babs is making fun of her and is unsympathetic to Babs' plight. Sun explains she was ignored because of a curse that has ruined her life and that she has problems Babs couldn't understand. Suddenly, Planchette shouts, Everybody stop feeling bad! And sets the record straight, empathizing with Sun being lonely and Babs feeling inadequate, and explains that maybe they can all be friends. As Sun is about to agree, she's dragged back into the kitchen by an animal skull-headed creature with long black tentacles screeching, No small talk! (laughs) A tentacle slaps Planchette's check on the table, along with a note for Babs saying, Sorry I yelled. I'll help. I love that bit so much. I know. Ah! (laughs) Planchette heads home, ready to help the ghosts achieve eternal peace. She moves some furniture and creates a cosy, if potentially fire hazardous, space to chat with the ghosts. The first to wander by is the ghost who tried to eat Winston, and this time she's dressed to the nines like a 20s flapper. The spirit introduces herself as Lucy and says she was murdered. But her death isn't why she's stuck in the haunted house, though. It was something she did. In 1924, she was at her best friend's birthday party. Some dandy asked her to dance, and she promised her best friend, Alice, that she would be right back for the next song but she never returned. Lucy would do anything to dance with Alice again. Planchette says she's going to track Alice down and knows who to ask. Pinion. Planchette, with Lucy, flies (laughs) up to Pinion in her chicken-legged mansion. Once inside, Planchette explains what happened to Lucy and what she needs. Unfortunately, Pinion's family are away on coven business, but Pinion suggests they look Alice up on the internet. <laughs> Shock. Oh. Uh. They find Alice and she is freaking awesome. Alice Hemlock is a world-renowned homicide detective and part-time necromancer. <laughs> who fortunately moved back to the town recently. Together, they head to Alice's home. At Alice's front door, magic hands grab at Planchette and Pinion as Alice kicks the door open, shouting, Interlopers! Alice is short and old and is wearing a traditional witch hat and an eye patch and a monocle, and in her hand, she's holding a wand. Alice pauses when she sees Lucy's ghost, and a tear falls from her monocled eye. In Alice's house over tea, Alice explains she became a homicide and missing persons detective to solve Lucy's case, but hers is the only one she never solved. Alice feels like she failed Lucy, but Lucy doesn't agree. Their friendship was the greatest thing she had in her life. Alice brings Lucy back to life for a song and they finally have their dance. Lucy drifts off happily, and Alice has renewed vigor for Lucy's case. Meanwhile, back at the adorable diner, Sun is finally getting off shift. Babs has waited outside for Sun all day. Babs thinks that Sun can repel glamours, when in fact Sun says people avoid her because of her curse turned her ugly. Babs disputes this. Sun is not ugly. With no other argument, Sun agrees to look into repels, but not right now. Her shift at the Hex Mart is about to start. What? She's literally just finished her long shift at the adorable diner. How could she be going to the Hex Mart now? 
Sun has seven jobs and each one pays terribly, but she needs the money in every shift she can get. Marlo suggests that Babs cover Sun's sh- shift so she can rest. Babs is <laughs> terrible at being a shop girl and hates every second of the 20 minutes she's there. <laughs> when she collapses or hides behind the counter after a particularly mean customer leaves, Babs wonders aloud how and why Sun does this. A snarky voice offers to tell her. It's Edgar, Sun's half-taxidermied lizard familiar, and he's not happy that that cow left him here all night, so he's (laughs) going to betray her trust and revenge. (laughs) Sun is saving up to get her face fixed by the witch doctor. What? Babs needs to talk to Sun immediately, but the scary monster manager has other ideas about Babs finishing her shift. Oh, and she isn't dressed appropriately and has too much individualism. Babs' siren magic explodes in a heart-filled mushroom cloud, causing the literal monster manager to fall back with hearts in in their eyes. Babs demands today's pay and raise for Sun before leaving. Sun is wide awake in Babs' bed, worried about helping the most popular girl in school find a rappel. She can't focus on the laptop, and instead she must snoop around in all of Babs' stuff. (laughs) Babs bursts in, hands Sun her money from the shift, and confesses she used her siren powers to get off early. Babs then confronts Sun about why she is saving up and not asking her parents for help. Sun can't. They dishonour her for trying to break the curse this way because they were the ones who put the curse on her in the first place. Breaking the curse is tradition for in her family to prove she is ready. Ever since Sun saw the witch doctor, she's been saving up and has about ooh, 2% banked now. Babs <laughs> offers to see if the witch doctor will lower the price, but Marlo shouts up that it would be illegal and shares that her dad misused his siren powers and is in jail for it. The only other option is for Babs to talk to her sisters. Babs' sisters are models, and they have that twin thing where they speak at the same time. They refuse to let Babs model because she looks down on the family, claiming she's only half siren because she's ashamed of their dad. And now she comes asking for help? Sun calls Babs' sisters jerks and offers to be her photographer instead. Meanwhile, back at the haunted house, Planchette is performing a spell to make a PB&J for the twin little girl ghosts. However, it does not send them on, nor do other things Planchette has tried. By the shifty look in their ghostly eyes, they've been messing with Planchette. At their request for more creepy dolls, Planchette finally catches on. The twins don't want to pass on. They're having too much fun. Planchette takes the PB&J outside where Winston finds her having a pity party. She doesn't know how to make the twins move on. She doesn't know enough to search the internet and she can't have friends over because of the ghosts. Winston tells her she just needs to give up and move back. No! It's bad advice. She belongs here and would rather live with ghosts than move back to a place that rejected her. If only a solution would fall from the sky. A solution falls from the sky. Well, it's a newspaper complete with an obituary section, and it falls from the delivery witch flying through the sky. Heading back into the haunted house, Planchette asks the twins what year they died, you know, out of pure, innocent curiosity with no ulterior motive at all. The twins do not believe her one bit. (laughs) Planchette heads to Alice's house and sees Alice through her window working on Lucy's murder. She has a murder wall and everything, and everyone knows how we feel about a murder wall. Planchette asks Alice if she knows the twins whose picture she managed to take. They are Dottie and Lottie Shelley, who, 200 years ago, just vanished. Everyone thought they had run away because their father was a nasty piece of work. The rumor is he had a factory boy killed for making friends with the twins, who he kept locked up and controlled. 
crying at their sad tale, Planchette leaves, now knowing exactly what she must do. <sighs> Back at the haunted house, Planchette calls for Dottie and Lottie. She's got them something from the Hex Mart. Confetti! And toys! And books! These items won't make them pass on, but it will let them have fun in their afterlife. Planchette tells them they are welcome to stay for as long as they want. And Winston says they better start paying rent. <laughs> Aww. The end. To the be end continued. To be continued. Oh, it's so cute. And it's to be continued October 2023. I, I know. Yes. So yes, me too. So precious. So precious. Right, well, we're going to go and magic up some PB&J slash pizza. Oh, yeah. Heck yes, we are. In the short period of time people can listen to another podcast. Yeah. Hi. I'm Bethany Finger, the host of Prince Kai Fan Pod, a Marissa Meyer book club podcast. Join me every week during my read-along journey through all of the books by author Marissa Meyer, one chapter at a time, spoiler free. Each episode will feature a different guest, new fan art, and laughter and joy through reading. You can find Prince Kai Fan Pod on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and all other listening platforms. And now, back to the show. I don't know how to say what I liked the most about this book because I loved all of it. It's definitely if if you liked Garlic and the Vampire or Garlic and the Witch, you will adore this one as well. Yeah, it's that kind of precious cuteness, fan family amazingness that you just. Oh, it's just so nice. Yeah. God, you know how much everyone knows how much we love a found family. That's our favorite. That's our fa- I think it might be our favorite thing collectively yeah. as fictional hangover. You know, second to vampires, but yes, everybody knows that. But yes, I loved the found family, and I loved that they all just immediately start working together and solving each other's problems and helping each other out. It's it's so <laughs> sweet. They've got complicated situations. They've got complicated problems. But they don't make it overly complicated in saying, I'm going to help. You know, it's just, it's an easy thing. Well, you need assistance. I'm here for you. And even if you can't help me, that's fine. I want to be a nice person and help you solve your problem. Yes. And it's just, it's nice. It's nice to read a book that's just chicken soup for the soul, that's uncomplicated. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's like, I know Winston told her we'll just give up and move back. I almost, I almost feel like he was doing that. He was, he didn't mean it. Yeah. Just so she would be like, no, we gotta figure this out. Yeah, sometimes you need to do that reverse psychology. Yeah. And so, yeah, I appreciate that. Winston's very smart for a rabbit that looks exceptionally like a guinea pig. <laughs> I swear it's a guinea pig. It looks just like a guinea pig, but I'm pretty sure the author herself said that it was a rabbit. Yeah. It's a guinea pig. Genuinely... And- who, who, who can say it unless it's written down yeah um, but I think it's is really it cute. a loaf of bread is it a skull yeah who knows it's up to interpretation <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think I feel like I'm in the same boat though where I don't know what to say about the standout moments like we've talked yeah. okay found family wonderful yes sarcastic familiars sold Sold, sold. Yes. I'm going. I'm yes. going to betray the trust of my witch because the cow left me in the hex mart all night. Yes. How is how can one be half taxidermied? I have that question. I don't know, but I love that Babs is like, uh, your mouth isn't moving. How are you talking? And he's like, I'm half taxidermied. <laughs> 
if you just like respect. got a little pointy triangle open mouth and it's amazing amazing love it yeah chicken legged house love a baba yaga yes of course chicken house reference yeah haunted house house to the year yeah i love all of the stuff happening in the background of the house with all of the ghosts just doing weird stuff and my god i know i said it while we were recording but <laughs> when lucy in the background is like cooking that one bulb of garlic i don't know why i find it so hilarious <laughs> but it broke me <laughs> i was i was laughing like I, I had to read this one on my phone because i didn't have a physical copy of it and the app that i used i i read this one on hoopla yes. and it allows to scroll through each panel individually instead of like looking at the page and having to scroll around on it <laughs> bulb of garlic <laughs> so I was like how is she going to eat a bulb of garlic she's a ghost <laughs> but then I got really confused because I thought oh well obviously that's a, a chef ghost and then no she's a 1920s flapper <laughs> you can be more than one thing Claire. oh yes without a doubt but I, I, I honestly thought like it was going to be two different ghosts it was going to nope. be yeah but no, nope. same, same. Nope. Loved it. That's your and life then, lesson yeah, for today. Ari and Winston's. Stop bonding and come help us. <laughs> yes. And she's about to cook them. Loved it. Uh, I loved it. I loved when Pinion met Ari and the Firefox and <laughs> oh, he's you know there being on fire, singeing this tiny little bird. <laughs> Like, it's just a circle of life. No, Ooh, it's murder. It's murder. <laughs> Again, it's a matter of opinion. Yeah. That is a perspective. Yeah. And then also, opinion's so sad. And she's like, I'm n I can't even talk to animals. I'm never going to be my familiar. <laughs> Ari's like, hi, I'm a bird. <laughs> You're talking to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> And totally bypassing the fact that she talked and threatened the Firefox. Right, no. I do like the sun giving her the umbrellas, Alice. It's going to be perfect for your mood. And yeah, actually, yeah. That That is delightful. Loved yeah. it. Yeah, I loved, I loved the umbrella that <laughs> rains on the person carrying the umbrella. <laughs> it's fantastic. And I also loved that that story happened like at the exact same time that Planchette is moving into the house. You know, it seems like it happened so long ago, but no, it just happened, like, literally at ago. the same time. She's like, yeah. it's such a long story, I can't tell you right now, but, like, it just happened. It literally just happened, and it's really not a long story it's at not. all. It's about, you know, two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> I was wondering, potentially. I've got two questions, actually. Okay. Question number one. Do you think there's a potential love interest between Babs and Son? If there's not, it, the book is wrong. Fair. I agree. Thank you. Hmm. And my second question is, do you think we can trust the witch doctor and perhaps he's the one who killed Lucy and took Dottie and Lottie. Because you don't see anybody but a tall silhouette. And the witch doctor is very, quite traditionally drawn. Yes. Um, long, thin, do her masked top hat. Yeah. You, you don't see any features, but it's just a very long, thin silhouette. And I was wondering if perhaps... Because for me, you could introduce a new character in volume two that's going to like dip into those storylines because now we have Dottie Lottie and Alice's investigation. We have those mm. storylines running through that thread. We need a character that's going to ultimately be the villain there. And I'm wondering how much either the killers, the, the killer used to live in the haunted house that used to be their house or potentially it's the witch doctor who just seems to be in the background. Yeah. Um, 
like wasn't mentioned in summaries, but he does appear in like the diner at one point. Doesn't see anything, but he's just there. So yeah. it's almost for me like like oh, he's eavesdropping. He's there potentially, yeah. or it's just like a device for the author to go like who knows the witch doctor is the bad guy yeah. to be like, you know, don't forget this character exists. Yeah, it isn't just this one scene with Pinion. Or it could be also. an elaborate setup and you're meant to think that exactly exactly and i'm fine with that if it is yeah because we don't have very much information at all yeah from one book so i'm very excited for book two to see what other things might be yeah revealed. what are we gonna learn and yeah. like do you think this is gonna be an ongoing thing or do you think the story's gonna wrap up at any point um you could get two or three books more out of the, that story yeah. as you add in other ghosts yeah but they're not necessarily like the twins who are going to stick around there could be ghosts like lucy who you able to find their piece yeah um but i feel like we could also just have everyone else's stories you know maybe sun solves her curse or maybe she realizes that she doesn't have to solve her curse or maybe there's a love story with her and Babs and maybe it's both of their stories at the same time. Like this one was kind of a like it was mostly planchette, but there was some pinion and a little bit of Sun and Babs. So maybe the next one will be more Sun and Babs and a little bit less planchette. No, I agree. I, I think it's all highly likely and if this was to drag out I said I, I actually I've used the phrase drag out and I don't mean it it's got negative connotations if right. this story was to take four books in the telling i'm more than happy to read yeah because it's super it, short anyway it's not like it's a long no no, no i think it was like 350 pages it was tiny 150 pages something like that yeah it's tiny it's a 20 minute read if you're just reading through but yeah. i would recommend you know read through it but then read through it again and really study the pictures and look through yeah the pictures. well that's how you're supposed to properly read graphic novels Claire. well exactly and i really enjoyed this one because sometimes like you know when you're talking about the both the background information and how the the backgrounds were wibbly wobbly and stuff mm. like when i was looking through it the first time i really enjoyed like the trees are just all weird and warped and mm -hmm. you go from the suburbs in the first instance with planchette and it it's a recognizable landscape mm -hmm. and it's like she's moved to this better ma more magical place she's actually moved to somewhere that is going to accept her as being a witch and she's not going to be the quote-unquote oddball for being a witch yeah she's moved to a magical area i mean for goodness sake there's a place that has there's a house with on chicken legs there's a witch doctor there there's a girl with a eyeball in her hair literal monsters managing the hex mart and the diner so yeah it's i like this town so do i so do i and the fact that there's nobody else there apart from ghosts planchette pinion her family who were at a coven meeting babs son and the witch doctor and alice yeah you know there's no that you don't see anybody in the background i oh the rude customer the rude customer could be the murderer. Could be. <laughs> could be. Yeah, so I'm I, I am more than happy because this was divided into chapters where each chapter kind of concentrated on a particular character. Yeah. And their part in the whole overall story as well, or the background. And it was so nicely put together. It really mm. was. And you didn't feel like as you were learning about Sun and Babs's history going to high school together and Babs is actually a full siren and her dad you know there were only small panels in yeah. the grand scheme of things but like we'll say it was a short book but when Planchette and Pinion were not on the page you didn't feel like you were missing those characters because yeah. you, you were filling in the background of everybody else and then they would come back in and give us some something nice like yeah. Planchette doesn't like doors so she goes through everybody's windows <laughs> I don't think I would like going through doors either if you go to one and giant hands grab you. No, no, not at all. She's not very graceful going through the doors either, so no. I can totally relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> I love the art style 
like in the back of the book there is like sketches and stuff and like while the author was working on it sketching things out and like she started out and she was really skinny and she had like little noodle legs and I don't know I just I like I like her final form she is a curvy girl and it's really nice to see yeah and so is Babs Babs is oh, gorgeous yeah. Babs is very anime inspired curvy girl yeah like she dresses in cat cosplay yes and it's delightful yeah yeah it's it's a gorgeous book it really it is it really is and it's Ooh. a nice read it's a good introduction to graphic novels as well if you're yeah. looking for something yeah to ease into it and yes there, there definitely is a more more to the story definitely which could be frustrating if you're trying to get yourself into reading a graphic novel um but it's it's a nice easy read um uncomplicated yeah it's very it's the panels are set out so you can follow them as well mm-hmm. which is some modern mini dc and marvel ones i found um kind of like stretch the panels or make them all a bit weird so you don't yeah. know necessarily where to read them um so this this is really good introductory uh graphic novel as well as well yeah. and so so is garlic and the vampire and garlic and the witch and i know i've said it already um and i'm not trying to cheat my recommendations but <laughs> you know it falls nicely into that category yeah. and it's there's nothing you need to be concerned about in the reading of them mm. Like you could give it to a kid, a little kid, and they yeah. would find enjoyment out of it as well. Who was your favorite character? Alice. I freaking loved Alice. She, everything about her is amazing. She's this tiny little whirlwind of a woman who's a homicide detective and part time necromancer. <laughs> There's a speech which I'm going to give later that she says, and, and, and I just. I need more Alice. I yes. need a spin-off series about her life as a detective necromancer for a hundred years. I just need more. <laughs> She's done so much and seen so much and made so many deals with the devil. I want all of it. Me too. So I, would, I would love to read that story. Especially like when you when you when they're like having a flashback and it's the two of them together in the 20s like Lucy is tall and Alice is also tall not quite as tall as Lucy but now (laughs) in present day she's like this tiny little squat little angry witch and I let she's adorable and she's a necromancer um... Exactly. Who who is the Harry Potter character that has the the Mad Eye Moody? Yes. It's like she's she's got this Mad Eye Moody look about her she's, eyes. And she's very she's very grizzled. Yes. She's seen things. <laughs> she has. And damn, I want to know what. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Who's your favorite character? Sun. And also Edgar. Her half taxidermied familiar. I still need to know the logistics of that. Yeah, I um, I'm very curious that how he's half taxidermied. But what's the other half? Is it alive? Is it dead? Who can say? Edgar. <laughs> he can. Yeah. Um, or son, if she has time. No, but she she's busy. She's yeah. busy right now. Um, but I liked her style. She looked like... What's the word that I'm trying to think of? Cosplayable. <laughs> she looked quite <laughs> cosplayable, yes. Um, why I'm so upset with myself that I can't think of this word because this is a word that I know and I'm always the person who knows this word. She looks like a Japanese demon. Oni? She looks... Or yokai. Yokai is the word that I typically would use. But yes, that's what that's what she looks like to me. Yes, I agree. And I, and I love it. 
Yeah. I want to know more. Why was she cursed? Why is that her family's ritual? I need to know. I want to help her solve her problems. I agree. Yeah. It's it's nice to have a first book in a series where there's so many questions, but you don't mind not knowing the answers to yet. Yeah. And you look forward to finding them out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Did you have any surprises? Because I only had one. Okay. That it was just over so suddenly. <laughs> yes, like I, it just ended. I need more. Especially when you read when you're reading it on digital, you're like, yeah. oh, I've still got another twenty pages to go, and it's like, oh, to be continued, and then it's all the sketches and background, like, mm-hmm. off information. I was like, that's lovely. But I want more story. <laughs> I need more story. I yeah. need it there to be more story. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. I agree. End of sentence. Done. Move on to the next section. Yes. <laughs> oh, that means it's time for Would You Rather. We asked on social media, Would you rather magic the perfect pizza or the perfect PB and J. Oh. Wow. Facebook, ninety three percent pizza. Instagram, eighty percent pizza. Twitter, one hundred percent pizza. TikTok, seventy eight percent pizza. There is not a lot of love for PB and J, and we have a few comments. We do have some comments. Vincent on Facebook said PB and J is an abomination before the gods and goddesses. Bree on Facebook says perfect PB and J is a delicacy unto itself, don't get me wrong, but hot cheese on bread will defeat it any day unless I have a special nostalgic craving. Emily on Facebook said pizza over PB and J any day. <laughs> You need to read that one. Annie on Facebook said, I make an excellent PB&J. I'll summon the pizza. Colin on Facebook said, Now, I'm torn because even a bad pizza is pretty much perfect, but PB&J is minging. So here's the theory. A perfect pizza isn't going to be able to be much better than the average pizza, what with all pizzas being awesome. But the perfect PB&J, now, that could be something really special. A new food group to munch on that tastes oh so good. I think I'm going to have to go for PB and J. You know, it's the one PB and J vote. <laughs> no, there's another one. Glim Glam Jen on Instagram says PB and J. I love a good peanut butter sandwich. Plus, if I could magic peanut butter, think of all the dogs I could make friends with. <laughs> <laughs> Inside the cover on Instagram said, don't make me choose. To which we responded, you have to. And then it <laughs> did. <laughs> and author friend Real Jackson Ford on Instagram said, pizza. Always pizza. I think if it had been pizza versus grilled cheese, Real Jackson Ford would have had a different answer. Oh, I think that tacos versus grilled cheese. That would have been like... That would that would made him like physical pain. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. Did we have many responses from the <laughs> library? We did. Uh, there was lots of pizza. Pizza, not a fan of PB and J. Um, same. The perfect pizza is still more heavenly than the mer- most perfect PB and J. Um, let's see. Someone drew a picture of a pizza and said it's more filling. Uh, there's more variety and savory is better than sweet. And then someone just violently circled PB and J and then someone else circled it again. And then someone drew an arrow to it. And then someone else said, pizza, pizza. (laughs) So division in the library there. Yeah. I mean, it looks like. Maybe three people voted for PB and J. If the circles are two different people circling, and yeah, it, I mean it's more pizza. Pizza wins, but it was pizza at least wins. there were more P 
PB&J boats. I mean, you say that. We're oh. all about to enter our with boats. That's true. We are. I, I Hold on. I missed one from the library. Um, someone said pizza because they don't like peanut butter and jelly to touch. Fair. So, us. I don't even think this is a question. Peanut butter is the vile excrement from the devil's behind. Yeah, you hate peanut butter. I cannot stand it. Yeah. It's just wrong. So... I am not going PB and J. I can't think of anything. Well, I can't think of anything worse. But peanut butter and jelly or jam, if you you know British. Why? Why would you put those two things together? It's just disgusting. You nasty, nasty person. So it's going to be pizza because pizza is always the right answer. Yeah, I think like many of our responses were like. I mean, there's there's not a whole lot that goes into peanut butter and jelly, so it's kind of hard to get it wrong. But pizza, there's so many more options. There's so many things that you can do to make it perfect. And if you had magic involved, you know, what else are you going to add to it? So I feel like the answer just has to be pizza simply be because fair. it's more complex. Saying that, though, with the peanut butter and jelly, you've got a variety of different flavours of jam. You've got a variety of different breads. Do you toast it? Do you not toast it? Do you put butter on it? Do you put something else on it instead? Or yeah. do you just leave the jam and the peanut butter as the the lubricant? Do you slightly toast it afterwards? Do you use smooth? Do you use crunchy? Do you use a little You're bit right. of both? You're right. Do you sandwich the peanut butter between the jam in the middle or the other way around? It's like having a scone, cream why, and jam. What do you why do? Why have you thought about this so much, Claire, if your answer is pizza? Because I still need to give due consideration to the other one. Hmm. It, I, I honestly, hand on heart wished pe- peanut butter was nicer for me than it is. And you know... I regularly retry peanut butter in the vain hopes that my taste buds have changed. But I have been doing this for (coughs) years Mm -hmm. and it hasn't. And I think it's at the point where I'm like, no, I just can't. Like Reese's peanut butter cups are just not nice to me. You know, it's it's okay if you don't like peanut butter, Claire. I know, but I still get wrong of people for not liking peanut butter. Usually they're American. I mean, I prefer peanut butter on things like, like if I have a waffle or a pancake, I like to put peanut butter on. I'm happy plain. We'll just have some tiny little bit of syrup. Yeah. If I, if you have like a British pancake for pancake day, I like either lemon juice or just some cream cheese. That's it. No. I know I'm boring. I don't understand what you just said. I you... sent you pancake mix. Did you not try it? Yeah, but... You, you can put peanut butter on if you so desire. I did. <laughs> you can, yeah. My husband will and my son lather it with chocolate spread, like Nutella, and like put cream on or bananas and basically make it into a bit of a crepe sensation. Yeah. Because essentially that's what it is. A crepe sensation. Um, a crepe sensation. But I'm, <laughs> when it comes to those type of pancakes, I prefer savoury over sweet. If it's like a, like a, do you call them silver dollars pancakes? The fluffy kind for breakfast? Like short stacks. Those are, those are little. Those are the size of silver dollars. All right. But those kind of fluffy pancakes, yeah. breakfast pancakes. Yeah. I don't mind those having a bit of sweet with just tiny, just a little bit of syrup on and yeah. some fruit. Which surprises everybody because everybody's like, do you not eat more? And I'm like, no, actually, I don't. <sighs> it's just that Lexus hang around me. It's so lovable. <laughs> I think we need to move on. I think we do. I'm still questioning pancake with lemon juice. I guess that's why you sent the lemon juice. I just thought that you sent the lemon juice because, like, you need lemon juice in your house. But you just you just put it on top of your pancake? I don't understand. Yeah. 
Well, pancake, that kind of pancake mix for like the British pancake day, which I, I was totally shocked when I found out you didn't have pancake day. Um, it's just a Yorkshire pudding, which is just eggs, flour and milk, maybe some seasoning, depending if you want to make it sweet or savoury. And it's just flat. I know somebody, when, when you when you know your little, like, I say junior school, so what, 8, 9, 10, 11 years old you know you go around your friends for for dinner after school you're gonna go for, you're gonna mind for tea uh, and i went around friends and it was near pancake day and the mum made pancakes and the pancakes were delicious and i sat in horror as they spread butter on it and oh, i was like so oh, good oh, no I, I just couldn't the, the, oh no i just weird weird but yeah a little bit of lemon juice and sometimes put some sugar on that's good squish your lemon squish your sugar I don't really put the sugar on because I like the tartness of the lemon I wish I, I could wish... make you pancakes now and put lemon juice on I wish that you could come to the United States and eat an American style pancake I wish I could come to the United States and go in your kitchen and make you Yorkshire puddings and pancakes I will bring a Yorkshire pudding tin Maybe one and then day. I will leave it and then you will have a Yorkshire pudding tin and I will teach you how to do Yorkshire puddings and you will be able to blow people's minds with your Yorkshire okay. puddings. Okay, I like that. Deal. I'll put it on the list. I'll put it on the yes. list. Yes, yes. Next question. <laughs> Would you rather live in a haunted house or a house on chicken legs? No contest, haunted house. I'm really surprised you didn't say the house on chicken legs. You love a Baba Yaga. I love my some Baba Yaga. I love me a haunted house. I can't go wrong with this one. Can I have a haunted house on chicken legs? Yes, because I will too. Okay, fine, sorted. Same. (laughs) (laughs) Would you rather work at the Hex Mart or the adorable diner? But I will put a caveat to say you comes with the monster manager, the literal monster manager. Mm. What's my job? At the adorable diner. Am I like a waitress? Yeah, basically Am I a server? Job. Yeah. You are taking over for son. You're covering I shifts. I'm, I think I'm going to pick the Hex Mart. I mean, not that I like just sell an inordinate amount of things at the library, but I feel like that would be easier for me to move into versus something involving food because I've never worked in food service. Yeah. So I'm going to pick mm-hmm. the Hex Mart. I'm saying exactly the same. I have worked customer service at shop things like that as a shop girl. Yeah, so, the nuns with their panties. They're nuns with the panties. And the same shop also has a food mall inside, food hall. And I did cover a couple of shifts there, which was quite fun. But I was underage, so I couldn't sell the alcohol. I had to get somebody mm. to sign that off. <laughs> yeah, I could, I've done customer service. I can fake customer service. I've never yeah. worked food service. And I do not want to work food service. That's hard. No, no yeah. Plus, you can sit down at least when you're behind the counter at the hex mart. Yeah. <laughs> Would you rather have a guinea pig and or a rabbit, a bird, or a half taxidermied lizard as a familiar? <laughs> I'm not going to have a bird because we know how my feelings are about right. birds. Right. Yes, you would just be constantly terrified. I'm going to go with half taxidermied lizard as a familiar because, damn, I want that sassy taxidermied lizard. Me too. Edgar is delightful. Yeah. Yeah. I do like Winston, though. Don't get me wrong. Winston would be my second choice. I really appreciate the fact that we both were under the impression that Winston was a guinea pig. And I love that his name was Winston because many years ago, when I worked in the same library that I work at now, but in a different position, we had library guinea pigs and i named one of them winston (gasps) so i had winston the guinea pig and here's me crossing out cat because you've already got two (laughs) yeah (laughs) but i'm i am also gonna go with a half taxidermied lizard it's just it's the creepy option yeah. So of course that's what I have to pick. Just make sure you don't leave him in the hex mart after your shift. No. You cow. <laughs> I loved it when he called her a cow. <laughs> that cow. 
Would you rather be cursed to repel people or cursed to draw people to you? Oh my god, repel people a thousand times. Oh, it's the only right answer. <laughs> I do not want to draw people to me. Ugh. Mm-mm. Can't think of anything worse. It's no. worse than having a bird as a familiar. <laughs> okay. Favourite final thought clip. What do you got? Well, uh, can we just tell everybody to read the entire book and you'll get all of them? Yes, we need to do that because I have quite literally a million. I have lords and I, I didn't even, I didn't even like pick all of them. I got magic on my side. Oh, oh my gosh, it's perfect. You mean haunted. <laughs> ah, candle. Here's your pancakes, duck. Oh, oh son. Alice, enter Lopez! God, I love that panel so much. She literally boots the door down screaming, enter Lopez. <laughs> and speaking of Alice, he is, is the... <laughs> I stop crawling through my window, you rapscally. I love Rapscallion. Yes. Excellent use of Rapscallion. Yeah. He is the uh, monologue. Hey, give me a break, you insolent baby goth. <laughs> I'm ancient, and I've had to make some pretty shifty deals with death, okay? Deals with death? Cool! Nah, not cool. Death is a super petty dude. Raise a few dozen people from the grave, and all of a sudden he shows up like... You're upsetting the balance of nature. You must pay, blah, blah, blah. The next thing you know, he's got both of your eyes and a bit more. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> what you got? Nothing says let's be pals quite like a joint exorcism. Yes! I'll put that on our list. Yes. What's going on here? The circle of life. Murder! <laughs> <laughs> I love then shortly after that he kept getting distracted by breadcrumbs and predators <laughs> poor poor tiny little Ari I am not eating vines and ghost for breakfast <laughs> <laughs> oh it's just you and me weird anime toy <laughs> And finally, your friendship was the greatest thing life ever handed me. Oh, oh, you ended on like one fifth of an emotion. I know. Oh, I feel okay. It's a bit hot. <laughs> okay. If you liked this, try this. What are you going to suggest? Right. I'm going to suggest something that is on my TBR and it's literally like I've, lo- I've, I've loaned it from the library. I just mm-hmm. haven't had a chance to read it yet. Mm-hmm. And it's the Oja Woja by Madeleine Visago. And it's a graphic novel. It's of the same kind of ilk as Unfamiliar. It's uh, uh, probably a younger audience kind of uh, independent. Welcome to Bolingbroke. It's a small town just like any other. Oh, so 8th grade as Val and Lainey think. They're the best of friends, they love the same comics, they watch the same shows, and they're always there for each other, which is important when you're queer, like Lainey, or on the spectrum, like Val, and just don't seem to fit in anywhere. When a school project about their hometown's supernatural history leads to a for real ghost sighting, Val and Lane realise Bolingbroke might not be as boring as it always thought. But after running with the re- resident middle school queen B, who also happens to be Lainey's former friend, they decide to take things to the next level and accidentally summon the Orsha Warsha, a demonic presence connected to a slew of mysterious tragedies throughout Bolingbroke's sordid histories. Now all heck is broken loose, with the whole town acting weird and nowhere left to turn. It's going to be up to Val and Lainey and their small group of friends to return things to normal. Normal is even something that they want to return to. I think it sounds amazing and I can't wait to read it. That sounds fun, yeah. What have you got? Well, I am going to share one that is also a very, like, it's also a graphic novel and it's for younger readers. Yeah. Um, 
this one was handed to me the other day by one of my coworkers at the library. And he said, you know how you're reading really cute graphic novels lately? And I said, yes. And he said, well, you have to read this one. So it's called Bug Boys by Laura Netzker. Uh-huh. And it's, it's really very cute. So Rhino B is a brash but sweet guy. Stag B is a calm and scholarly adventurer. Together, these two young beetles make up the Bug Boys, best friends who spend their time exploring the world of Bug Village and beyond, as well as their own, sometimes confusing and complicated, thoughts and feelings. In their first adventure, the Bug Boys travel through spooky caves, work with a spider to found a library, and save their town's popular honey supply from extinction, and even make friends with ferocious termites. What challenges will these two earnest beetles face? Whatever it is, you can be sure that Rhino Bee and Stag Bee will face it together with the power of friendship behind them. <laughs> and I just have to say that the spider librarian is it's my you. favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> When's the next um, dress up day at work? <laughs> Oh, I need to create one. Do I need an excuse? No, no, I don't. I do not need an excuse. (laughs) You're going to get a reputation. Good. I'm fine with it. And is it to have your arms and legs? I'm fine with that. It's fine. It's fine. (sighs) Do we have anything on the new Indie Spotlight? Yes. I feel like we've both been waiting for this one for a long time, and this was just the perfect opportunity to share it. It's The Princess and the Grilled Cheese Sandwich (laughs) by Dayan Muniz. I I physically cannot wait to read this book. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait for my pre-order to come in. Lady Camembert wants to live life on her own terms without marriage. Well, without marrying a man, that is. But the law of the land is that women cannot inherit. So when her father passes away, she does the only thing she can. She disguises herself as a man and moves to the capital city of the kingdom of Fromage to start over as Count Camembert. But it's hard to keep a low profile when the beautiful Princess Brie, with her fierce activism and great sense of fashion, catches her attention. Camembert, I have to say it fancily every time, Camembert can't resist getting to know the princess, but as the two grow closer, will she be able to keep her secret? A a romantic comedy about mistaken identity, true love, and lots of grilled cheese. I, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Yeah. I think the paperback's already out, but I've got a special hardback edition on pre-order that's due the end of this month, and I'm so excited. (gasps) That's it for this episode of Fictional Hangover. I'm Amanda. I'm (laughs) Kyle. Join us next time as we discuss Teen Killers in Love by Lily Sparks. The entire reason why we have Road Trip Month. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Lily Sparks. And if you're an author, we too can design an entire theme around you. And we have already got plans for some. Yeah, we can and we will and we do and we are. (laughs) <laughs> Lily's going to be joining us for this one too so if you remember from last summer when she came on it was a lot of fun and now we're going to do it again she's Yay. graciously coming back and we're excited about it look out for our Would You Rather polls on social media don't forget about our book club and monthly challenges on Facebook be sure to visit our shop on Redbubble at fictionalhangover.redbubble.com for all your favorite fictional hangover themed merchandise and become a patron of ours on Patreon at patreon.com slash fictional hangover until next time remember the only cure for a fictional hangover is another book You can find us at fictionalhangover.com, follow us on Instagram at fictionalhangover, find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fictionalhangover, and on Twitter at fictionalhangover, no E-R. If you like this episode, check out our others, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe so you don't miss out. And finally, special thanks to Liz Emerson for her music. You can find her on Facebook and Patreon. Thanks for listening. <laughs>